Tonight on the deep end, spring sports are getting underway, and before your child hits the soccer field, tennis court, or track, it's a good time to think about concussion risk. Molly Shen joins us tonight. And Molly, you spoke with a doctor at Seattle Children's for some safety tips. That's right, Preston. With weather like we had today, spring is just such an exciting time for kids to be getting outside and be active. It's good, both physically and mentally. But from lacrosse to rugby, spring sports can also bring concussion risk. I asked Dr. Sarah Chrisman what parents should keep in mind. Um, in terms of concussion, there's really three things I would think about. One, you want your kid to know what a concussion is, and that's really simple, that you get hit in the head, you don't feel right, I think is the simplest way to talk about it. Usually things like headache, dizziness, feeling like uh, your balance is off, some of those things. Two, you want them to know that if they're not feeling right, if they're having any of those symptoms, they should tell a trusted adult, whether that's you, their coach, somebody else who's available, like an athletic trainer or referee. And then the third, maybe the most important thing is that you really want your kid to be engaged in organizations that value health and wellness above winning. And that's really where you have a choice and you have power to really think about the safety of your kid. Is there an age or level of development that you think is um, a child should reach before parents put them in sports that have that more vigorous contact? You know, I think it is, is, you know, deciding which sports your child plays is such a complicated thing. And I, I think that sports are very cultural. And so to say like one sport fits for one family, one sport fits for another family, I think those are very personal decisions and it's hard to say. I do think you know your kids the best and you know like when you feel like they're ready and they're able to make smart decisions, they're able to like manage their body in space. And I, I think that, you know, if your child is playing these sports like hockey, like football, there is a higher risk. But those are also, there are certain kids that really are drawn to those and that they really thrive in those sports. And so, it, I, I, as I said, I don't think there is this one size fits all. Um, and I really think there's many kids that if, if they can't play football, they might not play a sport at all. And so I think that's that's the kind of decision making that you're you're dealing with. The, the other thing I will say is I do think there are many kids that sports are what get them into academia, what get them excited about school. And I think that's important too. Um, let's just talk briefly about what happens if, if a child does suffer a concussion, what should uh, parents and coaches do? How's, how's that handled? That's a great question. Well, the first thing is that they should not be on the sports field. So if you are at all worried that a, a kid is injured, they should be pulled off. They should get some kind of an assessment if there's a medical provider available. If there's no medical provider available, they should not play the rest of that game. No game is worth like a you know 13-year-old's health. Um, and then once they've been assessed, if someone has said that they're clear, they didn't have an injury, they can go back in. Um, but the truth is that we still say that no one should be um, back in the same day, like that's really kind of been our consideration. Um, if someone does have an injury, the current approach to concussion is really a re what we call a rehabilitative approach. So it's the same as for any injury that there's some amount of relative rest. And then they're starting to reintroduce activity and doing that as tolerated. So, you know, the same thing, like if you had an ankle sprain, you'd have a few days that maybe you wouldn't put a lot of weight on it. And then you'd try to start slowly getting back into it. And we, we do know that kids that have a history of mental health, a history of learning disability or attention, or a history of headache, oftentimes they're going to have a harder time with concussion and might need more support. Um, but uh, other kids often will just do fine. And we'll, it may be a few days to weeks of like having some symptoms, but they should be getting a little bit better every day. That's the way that we think about it. Okay. Well, I really appreciate the insight uh, and um, giving parents some good things to think about as, as the kids head into spring sports. Well, great to be here and looking forward to watching more spring sports. So Molly, another important thing, there's been recent research about the dangers of smaller repeated hits that don't necessarily cause a concussion. Right, those are called sub-concussive hits, Preston. Dr. Crispin told me the research on those repeated smaller hits has primarily been at the college and the professional level where even the less forceful hits are much stronger. She said we're still trying to understand the role of those sub-concussive hits on younger athletes, and that's just part of why parents, coaches, and athletes all need to be paying attention to what's happening on the playing field and follow those guidelines if something just doesn't feel right.